hi, it's Basic Folk, a podcast where we have honest conversations with folk musicians. It's Cindy Howes. Hello. Hope you are doing well. Today, we're talking to Sunny War. Sunny War put a record out last year called Shell of a Girl, and she also has a new EP out. Uh, Can I Sit With You is the name of the EP. Sunny War has a cool finger-picking guitar style and a singing voice that I think matches her persona pretty well. Whimsical, yet really strong. Sunny's probably the bravest person I've ever talked to in my life, no joke. She's been through the ringer of life, living a nomadic life with her mom, surviving abuse, suffering from addiction, getting arrested, leaving home, living on the streets, hopping trains, and getting clean all before she was at least 20, 25. Music has been ever present in her life. She learned to finger pick guitar by listening to the Beatles Blackbird. At 13 years old, she joined a punk band which started a long, complicated relationship with the punk lifestyle. These days, Sunny's living in Los Angeles and surviving quarantine just fine. In talking to her, I decided to check in with how she's doing, dealing with lockdown, and I was glad to hear she was staying away from alcohol, not like me, and had just started eating a Kate Keto diet. Sunny War, full of surprises. I literally did not know what to expect as I asked each question. Thanks to Sunny for talking to me. We're going to take a listen to a song from her new EP. This is the title track, Can I Sit With You?, and then we'll get to our conversation with Sunny War on Basic Oak. Swimming in a fishbowl In the world that we call life Really wanna feel whole Never have but soon I might So shines like gold smile that I Your stage name is Sunny War, but your real name is Sydney Ward. Um, mm-hmm. did, did they call you Sunny when you were growing up? I was, I think I was officially Sunny in sixth grade, where it was just like, okay, everybody called me Sunny by then. You were born in Tennessee, but you and your mom would move around quite a bit. What was the reason for moving around so much? Mostly because. My mom is an alcoholic. She's sober now, but I think, well, she's told me that then it just, it was her way of feeling like she was starting over. Like she just, she wanted to, I guess she kind of like, would just kind of burn bridges and then want to live in a different city. And she was also like really young. Like, now, it's like since she got sober, she hasn't moved, like, one time. Where does she live now? She lives here, L.A. Because this was the last place we moved after she married my stepdad. Then we moved here. But also, a lot of, a lot of it was, a lot of it was also me moving with my grandparents. So not, not really moving with her sometimes. Because they, because my grandma... Sometimes I would stay with, in Detroit with my grandma. What was it like at your grandparents' place? It was uh, fucked up because my grandma was a little bit kind of like physically abusive a little bit. But now I think, I don't know, I, I don't really, it doesn't bother me that much anymore when I think about it now. I mean, she punched me one time in the nose one time. And I remember that, that memory kind of, cause that was like, that was like on our way to school. Then it was like, my nose was bleeding. And then she just told me to just tell him I fell and then drove off. And that would like stuck with me. Cause I remember being like trying to act, not trying to act normal, but I remember just feeling like all day in school, just feeling kind of like. Like, kind of, I don't know, embarrassed or something. 
I guess I felt no. embarrassed. Cause it's like I was all I was already not I didn't really have friends and anything cause I I was like always like the new kid. Cause even if I did go to school in Michigan, then I would go back to my mom the next year. Then I would go back. So it's like I never had any action. It's like all the other kids grew up together and knew each other. So I was so then it was just like oh now my nose is bleeding, you know just <laughs> just like not right a way a way to fit in. But I just want to say now I just think she was just really hardcore, you know. If you're having a hard time fitting in in school and you come to school with a bloody noise, that definitely is not going to help your situation. Can you talk a little bit more about that, uh, about like not having an easy time making friends, uh, moving from one place to another, and maybe how that experience affected your ability or even your desire to connect with other people? I don't know if I, if I wanted to connect if I ever wanted to connect with other people. Well, I might I might have, I don't think so. But I remember that the biggest thing is always was always an accent thing. That was like that's like the main thing is like if you go at least in elementary and middle school, if you talk different than that then it's over. So it wasn't, and it wasn't like I, it's the fact that I never really had an accent. That's what I've noticed. Because it's, it's like the kids in Michigan, they talk, you can tell when somebody's from Michigan. If you really know people, you know what I mean? There's a certain, they do like a thing where it's almost like they go up, it's almost Canadian. It depends on where in Michigan, but they almost kind of sound Canadian. So then in Tennessee, it's like, it's like, but I would spend like a year in Michigan and trying to sound like I was from Michigan, and then by the time I would go back to Tennessee, then I totally sounded like I was trying to sound like I was from Michigan. It just like always was fucked up. It was always like that was because I remember that was always the first thing people would make fun of was like, why do you talk? Why do you sound like that? And then going like from if you go from Michigan to Los Angeles. Then it's like, everybody kind of sound, well, everybody was Latino. So then, it, but they can't, they wouldn't really say that I sounded white. They would just say like, people almost saw I was from another country or something. I just remember that. That was a main thing was talking. So then I, I started to just be really quiet all the time. But that's another way to never meet anybody is if you don't talk. But then if you're always getting made fun of because people don't, they don't like how you don't sound like you're from there, then you don't want to talk anymore. But I, I start, I would take my guitar to school all the time. I always took my guitar to school. At least, at least in middle school I started taking it. Because people wouldn't sit with me, you know, at lunch. So would you play? Yeah. I have to have something to do. It's like if you're sitting alone at lunch, you have to read or play, or it's just too awkward. So, what was everyone's <laughs> responses to playing guitar at lunch? That some people I met from that. Actually, that's how I met the punk kids, at least the middle school punk kids, because they played guitar, I guess. So, I met this guy named Jordan, who used to listen to The Casualties, which I used to like that band. And then he played, he taught me how to play a Casualties song. But they still weren't my friends, you know? I don't think it's, the, I don't think it's as bad as other people really get picked on and stuff. Or they did. So, I think it was more like loneliness. Like, hmm. But then I think that's just natural though, because it's a lot of times it turns out the people that were lonely in school they just grow up to be lonely. It's not. It's just their life. <laughs> it's like. Do you do you feel like you know you were feeling lonely? Um, so if you are feeling lonely, then you want to try to like fill that space with something. What do you think you were trying to fill that with? Well, then it was more about art and music, because I was playing a lot, 
I started, and I started playing electric guitar in middle school, and I was like learning a lot of like classic rock songs, and that was like all I did when I was at home. Now it's more like now I have to choose between art and and addiction. I have to make a conscious decision which way I'm gonna zone out. What do you mean? Like I can either like zone out and get really into music and just like write and or I can just choose to zone out and by just drinking until I pass out. But it's really only one or the other. I can't do both. I can't not do one or the other. When did you come to that realization? Probably the first time I tried I got sober. <laughs> what was that like? Well, I mean, it was pretty boring, but it, well, it wasn't that boring because I was having seizures at the time. So it was that part. I was like d dealing with a lot of, cause that that was when I was still. That was when I did drugs. I, so I was having a lot of seizures, and I was like on a lot of medication, and just like trying to focus on just being physically healthy again. So I was kind of, at least, that was what I was doing. Like, I was, like, going, trying to go jogging and shit. I was, like, Rocky. When I first got sober, it was like that. It was like, I would get in my, jump, in my sweatsuit and try to run. <laughs> How'd it work out? I couldn't really run, you know? I was, like, you know, <laughs> I was, like, basically dying, but... I just, the first year, I was just trying to get healthy. Then, I didn't even have a guitar until my friend brought me a guitar to my sober living so I could mm -hmm. have, then I started writing a little bit. I wrote um, the songs from my Worthless EP in the sober living. Can we go back to talking about how you were introduced to the blues when you were a little kid? How did that music hit you at first I never I don't think I was I don't think I understood anything that any blues musicians were talking about till I was a teenager but I like I just liked the guitar I always thought it sounded mm -hmm. cool because my first guitar teacher James Nixon he's in ten, in Nashville he gave free kids guitar lessons but he was a blues guitar player, and my mom really liked him, cause he was just like a older, like a older blues guy, who was also like, giving free guitar lessons to kids. Like he was just like a lovable person, so it was like, she would let me go see him perform, cause he would play at like little bars around Nashville. But that, but I don't think I really, I knew he. I knew he was a blues musician, but I don't think I really knew, like if I were to, like now if I were to walk in and see him playing, I would be like, all right, he's doing like the B.B. King type of, like, I don't know, but then it was just like, I decided he was just a cool person that just played really good. So, but then I, but in Michigan, I think maybe when I was like 10 or 11, I saw, I saw B.B. King play with my grandma, cause she really liked blues. I guess I, I guess I always heard it all the time, actually, either from my grandma mm. or even, even my mom too. My mom liked a lot of, she liked a lot of different kinds of music, but she also liked traditional music and like old soul and stuff. I didn't, I never really liked things emotionally till I got emotional and I don't think I was like really like like I think the first time I really was paying attention to lyrics and like how people sang I was like maybe 14 because mm -hmm. before then it was just I just wanted to hear guitar I just wanted to know I was obsessed with like because I wanted to play rock music so I was just like obsessively listening to anything with guitar thinking that I was going to learn how to play everything. You're, the way that you play guitar now, it's 
it's a like a finger fingers picking um which is really cool and you learn how to play finger picking from the beatles and you were also really were into elizabeth cotton and mississippi john hurt do you know um were you talk when you were talking about you just wanted to hear guitar and you just wanted to to hear um different styles of guitar were you into finger picking when you were first hearing guitar or you know why why did that style appeal to you or emotionally resonate with you okay the guy james nixon the blues guitars he taught us how to play blackbird that was one of the like i think probably after a year of going to the class and that was just the first time i thought i sounded like really good i just thought like wow I sound amazing playing Blackbird. You know? <laughs> so then it's like, then I started, because I only knew how to play basic chords. So it was like, if I just strummed an E chord, it just sounded like okay. But then it's like, if I tried the same thing from Blackbird, it sounded, now suddenly this chord sounded really like interesting to me. So I think it was just because it just sounded like I was doing more even just playing basic chords hmm. and I was just striving to be a good guitar I don't know in my mind I thought this is how you sound really good I don't know can you talk about when you started writing songs, what influenced you to write it first and how how did writing help? I think when I was a freshman in high school, I just started writing just because I wanted to play in a band. But then I, I started liking it like later though. I started liking to sing later. What What was it like when you started to enjoy singing I think I just I started liking singing like four years ago maybe really <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's still why did why did it take so long to like singing I fear I barely like it now I like writing lyrics a lot but singing I don't like I think it's because I smoke a lot and it's like hard for me to breathe and I don't feel like it's like because I know people that I think sing really good and I can't do everything that they can do I just feel I feel limited in what I can do vocally which Mm. and it's like different I don't really like it's like I think like with guitar like if there's something I can't play I can try to play it like I can practice it and maybe be able to play it eventually but I feel like with singing it's like I I don't know if I can ever be able to do that and there's like I don't there's no way to expand but then now I'm I'm feeling more like it does get better like you can get more control of your voice I guess it's like I've never had any training so I don't I feel like there's things that might be obvious to people that that have actually like learned from a singer which is something I want I do want to do one day after the quarantine is take like a real vocal lesson to learn how to breathe um can we talk about how you feel about punk music now because you were talking about that's why you wanted to start writing songs and you were also going to punk concerts, drinking, getting into trouble when you were like around 13. Um, How do you reflect on that time now? And how do you feel about punk music now and the, and punk culture? Well, when I think about when I was younger, I can only think about how fucked up it is that people were okay selling me drugs and buying alcohol for me. That's the only thing I can think about sometimes, I think, because I don't think it, there's anything wrong with, like, s- like sneaking out and going to punk shows. I'm just, like, mad that I was, like, able to 
try heroin or able to get like so drunk that I woke up in the hospital and all because I'm like because at the time I just wanted to do everything but when I think of it now I'm like who the fuck is like yeah I'll sell you the like I don't know I think that's that part freaks me out but other than that like I still feel like not totally punk but I would say like I think they kind of like politicized me in a way I don't think I don't think I would ever thought about anything if I never was into punk music I guess like I think like a lot of stuff I was listening to made me feel like yeah I should just go and hitchhike and just go live in the woods which I think is very healthy and smart like way of living you know <laughs> Just kind of like, but it also gives me like s strength now where I just feel like at any moment, if I feel like walking away from everything, I'll just get my backpack and just leave. And just because you're born, you're born in a country or whatever, with all the, they have all their laws and everything already established. But I think just remembering like your birth is not agreeing, that doesn't give them the right to put all of this shit that they made up on, like, I think it just kind of, like, it, it's just centers, like, you're, you're only a human being, and you don't owe anybody anything, and they can't, mm -hmm. they really have, I don't know, all they can do is use force, but I just know, like, it's not really fair or right for any of this, like, just the fact that money even exists is just stupid. I don't know, it's like, thing, like, just punk is just sort of, at least taught me, like, to not think about money and stuff and just like mm. even though you could you could choose to but it, just know that it doesn't mean anything i read that you went to a music high school for a year and a half so you left because I, I would imagine that you didn't really like it very much but what aspects did you like about the school that might inform the musician you are today uh, I didn't get, I didn't get much out of the school because I just wasn't like I, I think, I think puberty was just overwhelming and I wasn't able mm. to really, I pretty much just didn't even try really, mm. and now I wish I did because that, that is a good school, but I think I just. I couldn't handle it. it was a lot. It was like my it was like my mom and my stepdad were divorcing and then we were living in me and my mom moved into a a sober living for women with children. So I was sharing a room with my mom. I was also it was like too many things going on like for me to try to be a student, you know? Because I, then I, I was also living with other women that were, like, sober, that just got out of rehab and stuff. It was like, I was living at a halfway house, you know? And then mm -hmm. it was like, then I was expected to, like, I don't know, I just couldn't focus on any, I just couldn't really, like, I was just, like, depressed and... Then I just stopped, I started kind of, like, not going to class and just hanging out at the beach and drinking and stuff. So I never got, I never really like gave it a chance. Like I never really tried to, even though I, I wanted to do it, I don't know. So the, the traumas that you experienced while you were homeless, where you said you were having drug induced seizures, you went to jail, Looking back on them at the place you are now, how do you see that person that you were? Like, do you feel empathy for that person? Are you amazed that you're alive? Are you angry at yourself? I don't. I don't feel. I don't feel empathy or or mad or anything at that person because I know it would just. Okay, I think if it never happened. It would probably happen at some point. 
it would just happen later. Like, like the same mm. thing. Okay, like how there's kids or there's people that they didn't really go to parties or drink or have sex or anything in high school, and then in college they just go crazy and do everything. I feel like it's the same thing. It's like, if anything, I feel I feel lucky that it happened at a younger age, because by the time I was like, what, like twenty two. I at least I had already gone to a sober living and stuff. I had ar- I had already tried everything. I had ar- I tried everything already. So at least I I was still like crazy, but it's like at least I knew already what I can't do, in a way. Which a lot of my friends, because when I was twenty two, I think I was starting to try to like have roommates and like have an apartment and stuff. And then a lot of my friends that I would catch up with later that I knew, they were just now starting to get like crazy and drugs and shit and start dropping out of college and just doing all kinds of, like to me it's the same thing. That's like a, it's different, but it's like, I was just, I was doing it on the street. I was doing different stuff on the street, but I feel like it's still the same kind of like breakdown that people have where they try to test everything in some Mm -hmm. way and I think I don't know I would rather do it back then because now it's like imagine if I just tried heroin for the first time right now like or any I don't know I don't know if I would have if I would have enough sense to not do stuff if I had never Mm -hmm. done it so that makes a lot of sense but I do the thing I regret I just want to say the thing I regret is just knowing so many street kids because, like, that's the only thing that's fucked up is, like, a lot of them died. So mm-hmm. that's diff- That's the only thing that I would have never... Because it's, like, all within the last couple years. That I would have never... Ima- I don't... I would have never imagined that part. The people that I knew that died, they were, like, my friend. Like, those are my real friends. Like, those are people... Like, I don't have anybody anymore that I feel that comfortable with. Like, they're... I can't explain... It's, like... It's, like, imagine... Like, if you have a best friend, it's, like, oh, there's your best friend, they just died. Like, if that happened, like, over and over again, it's just hard to, like... If I meet people, I don't... It's hard for me to be, like... Man, I like them. It's like, you, it's like, if I think of them as someone I like, I automatically think they could die or something. Which I think is just like a weird... I know that's not right, but it's like, it makes sense to me because it's happened. Oh, It's like happened, so I just think people are just temporary, like they don't, like... But I know it's also... Really, I should go back, I should go back to NA and AA. Because those people understand that. So I think it's mm-hmm. more... if I think it's more just like, okay, I've been... F- all of these people were addicts. But I don't think of them as addicts. Automatically. So I think that's the part... Maybe that's the thing I have, that I have to think is like... Those are not... They weren't making healthy life choices with their bodies. Mm-hmm. But I didn't like them because they did drugs. I liked them because they were really interesting people. Like, it's... I don't... Right. It just so happens. Heroin addicts are the most interesting people you'll ever meet, though. If you really have... Like, they're really... There's a reason that people who do heroin make really great music. So, like, nowadays, it seems like you are going for a safer, happier future. But you're still kind of caught between... The unreconciled past. Um, what is that duality like for you? And I'm wondering, like, you know, since you're in between these two worlds, do you ever feel like an imposter? I feel like I feel like a poser for sure. Like I feel a lot of guilt for not dying with my friends. But then also it's like they left me alone. So now it's like, might as well be a folk musician. Cause it's like, if I was gonna be a, if I was gonna be a street kid, I wouldn't even know who to talk to anymore. To me, it was like beautiful, like 
to just be a squatter and hop trains. I thought that was like a really like noble way to live or something. Uh-huh. I don't know. A part of me still does like it. It is romantic to me, but I know I can't even do it. I can't. My sobriety would be at risk. I know, but that's just me personally. I I have met people that are just totally straight edge though. That are just like they're just they're real anarchists and they really there's people like that but I don't I couldn't I don't know how to do that you've been around a lot of folk music in the last several years maybe more than ever before and not all of it is traditional um there is some like pretty experimental stuff happening out there in folk music but how has being around that crowd that music and the culture affects the way you think about the genre in new ways. I don't. I don't think about the genre in, in new ways. I don't really like folk music that much. I don't think about it that much. I like acoustic guitar. <laughs> I like, but the thing is, I don't like listening to it. I like playing it. So I feel like yeah. kind of. I feel funny because. It's like I've I've been meeting people. There's so, okay. There are a lot of there are a lot of folk musicians I like that I've seen and I didn't know about, and then I saw them and I liked them. Cause I will like anything if I like it, but it's like I don't think of that as like a genre, as a go-to genre, listening wise. Sure. Like it takes a certain mood for me to want to listen to that. So. I kind of feel good at, when I go to these folk things because I'm not as invested as other people around me are mm-hmm. in, like, the whole genre. Like, I feel like other people are, <laughs> like, they really know every single band and everything. They really are on it. Like, they're in this scene, you know? Which mm-hmm. I was more... I used to be more like that in the punk scene. Like, I used to, like... There could be some punk band that was playing only in basements all the way in Mexico City, and I knew that band. I knew about them. Like, I used to be, like, really, like, into that shit. So I, I see it, I recognize it, like, oh, they're, this is the music that they really like. But I don't have that. I'm not... <laughs> I just, like, I don't know. I like, but I like the technique. Let's do something. All right, th- that w- that was the end of the interview, but I want to do something with you called the lightning round, where I ask you very fun questions, hopefully fun questions, and you answer them. It's very easy. Okay. All, All right. right, you ready? Yep. First song that you learned on the guitar. It was Blackbird. As far as a as a real song, because because before that, we were just learning chords and scales so that was like the first actual song do you like dogs or cats dogs actually i like cat i like cats too so that's a weird question but so you can say both yeah oh both yeah (laughs) (laughs) what is the first album you bought with your own money i know i i have bought the distillers what was the name of the album? I don't know. What was your first concert? The first one I, I went to by myself was Agent Orange. What's your dream collaboration? Uh, my dream collaboration would be me and Jillian Welch. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Trek. I know that's political, but Star Trek. And that's... People don't... People don't know what they're talking about. They don't... It's like they never watched the original Star Trek. I like that answer. The real Star Trek is deep. And way more... I don't know. Star Wars is cool, but it's not... It's not like... It's not gonna help you become a better human being. Like Star Trek. That's it. You did the lightning round. We've had a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for talking to me today. I really appreciate it. Um, Reading your story was uh, really in, really intense and I'm really happy that 
you uh, were so open about your experience. Well, it was nice to talk to somebody in the first time in weeks. <laughs> Basic Folk This Week, produced by recent graduate Adam Corey. Congratulations to Adam in the class of 2020. Also, I want to say hello to our other producer, Laura McCarthy. Lindsay Myers is our business manager. Alex Stanton of Townspeople does our music. Basic Folk is part of the Pantheon podcast group. I'm Cindy Howes. Glad that you've listened all the way to the end. You're a super fan. Look at that. You can find show notes and details on the podcast at my website, cindyhouse.net. There are 70 episodes for you to catch up on if you haven't listened to them already and grab them again at cindyhouse.net. And I will talk to you later. Bye.